people are mind controlled. You're under mind control. This is the real agenda right here. This is a real story. There's the American flag subservient to the Vatican. They're flying the Vatican flag. He is on this Cardinal Dolan, Timothy Dolan. This guy's a very, extremely powerful Catholic, one of the most powerful Catholics in America right now. And here he's got Chump and Hillary. But notice the uh, stand here. It's kind of like these two are almost like at attention militarily. And he's kind of at the uh, parade rest or whatever. I thought that was interesting. But notice also the uh, circle of light there above his head. Like he's the saint. And here's the two little servants of the Vatican. What can we say about Donald Trump? Is he bought and paid for, like Clinton? Is he part of the establishment's plan? Is he just candidate number two? Because they're portraying this idea in the press that uh, they're dead against Trump being in or, or being selected as president. And it would seem that the New World Order would hate Trump to be the next president of America. But he said a few things at this event, which makes me think um, that he's just one of them. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias, to defend religious liberty, and to create a culture that celebrates life. And then he goes on to say this. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. Thank you very much, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you, thank you. So he's talking about the one world government there, and we've world got community. To and we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. And he says the religious leaders here are to be an example for everybody else. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example that we can follow. Okay, I don't think they're probably that good of an example. In the scriptures that we Jews and Christians and Muslims cherish. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. this thing and there's a crown above it I, we couldn't make out what these different metals are there on his shoulder but let me just show you what this thing is this is the order of the British Empire OBE for God and the Empire hmm you say what's significant about that well this order if you do the research into it you can look into it more but it's a it's a British Commonwealth order. In other words, it's people that are subservient to the throne of England. The throne of England being subservient to the Vatican. It is a basically a Shriner level. Of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. His message about rejecting a mindset of hostility. His calls to reduce inequality. His warnings about climate change. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Well, then I guess I'm going to be in trouble, huh? Because I'm anti-Catholic. Because I'm against Roman Catholicism. Oh, but he's the lesser of two evils, right? Oh, you know, Hillary's such a wicked you know, liberal and things, and she is. But he'll be so much better. They're both servants of the Vatican. Get it through your thick skulls, people. And I, I understand why, because the country is in a state, our country is not great either, the world is changing very fast, and so along comes someone and says, let's make our country great again. I can understand why people would buy that so easily. It plays on a, a place in people that is getting desperate. But that is the ploy, to feed into that desperation that is building within people, and that's exactly the kind of manipulation 
that it always does, just look back at history, history repeats itself, this is the same game with different players, don't fall for it. So, folks, this is all in control of the Jesuits. So the joke being here is that Henry Kissinger and the other people that he mentioned uh, are Catholic. I mean, what you're getting told here is the truth in the form of jokes. And without the amazing support of the many devoted Catholics on stage. You know, Catholics like Henry Kissinger, <laughs> Howard Rubenstein. Right, all Jews, apparently, you know, and according to the internet, conspiracy truthers, the Jews run the world. So this guy's telling you the truth here in the form of a joke. And without the amazing support of the many devoted Catholics on stage. You know, Catholics like Henry Kissinger. Okay, because they're not Jews, they are Catholic. Got to come together as he puts up 666. Not only as a nation, but as a world community. Come together not only as a nation, but as a world community. He just called for the New World Order, people. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example that we can follow. So Trump has been coming here uh, his whole life, apparently, according to this statement here. But I have great memories of coming to this dinner with my father over the years when I was a young man. Great experience for me. So this guy, Trump, is definitely on the payroll of Rome. Something, something odd here happens that I, th I thought was worth mentioning. Uh, the camera switches to Trump and the Cardinal standing next to him starts swaying and <laughs> nudges Trump. So uh, I just thought I'd point this out. Check it out. Life is your greatest gift to us. Teach us to respect life from its natural beginning to its natural end. Help us to reach out to the marginalized in our society. So <laughs> he nudges Trump and Trump starts nodding. Life is your greatest gift to us. Teach us to respect life from its natural beginning to its natural end. Help us. To and then Trump opens his eyes because he's wondering what's happened. To reach out to the marginalized in our society. So the only way to make America great again is not primarily with the ballot box. It is for people to get on their knees and pray that God would intervene in this situation, in the way things are unfolding, because these nations once respected God, but now they're striving after what's wrong, what's evil, what's sinful. And no man, including Donald Trump, is going to single-handedly save or redeem a nation uh, that is turning away from God. Don't make this political. I'm really surprised that 30% of truthers on the main channel made this political. This is nothing to do with politics. This is to do with a spiritual war. This is to do with the Bible. It's to do with prophecy. And um, we need to pray. That's all we can do. Don't Please don't ask my advice on who or whether you should vote because that's between you and God. It's, it's your own choice to make. But I'm just trying to warn people that this agenda goes far deeper than it looks. Don't just jump on someone charismatic who comes onto the scene and says everything that our rich and ears want to hear. 
because <clears throat> this is how the trick works. They play society. They play on people's emotions and it's dangerous. All right, if you're falling for this Vatican psyop type of a thing that, oh, he's so much better than she's going to be. He's the first man I've ever heard running for president that said we need to stop anti-Catholic bias. We need to fight against that. I never heard anybody else say that. But you're not convinced, are you? You just got that little ray of hope. Well, I just, I just can't think what would happen if Hillary would get in. I just, I just can't think. Yeah, uh huh. Sure. You need to get right with God, people. Persecution is almost at our doorstep now. We're having some fun here tonight, and that's good. On a personal note, what an amazing honor it is to be with all of you. And I want to congratulate Hillary on getting the nomination, and we're in there fighting. And over the next 19 days, uh, somebody's going to be chosen. We'll see what happens. But I have great memories of coming to this dinner with my father over the years when I was a young man. Great experience for me. This was always a special experience for him and me to be together. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Yo vi parlo como fratello. Cari al Signore perché ci unisca tutti. E avanti, siamo fratelli perché questo è un miracolo, il miracolo dell'unità è incominciato. I mean, we could have another eight years of Hillary Clinton and the worst mess that anybody could make out of a nation. You're going to be held seriously, seriously to account by God if you don't vote. And you're going to find that out before this broadcast is over. You're going to be guilty of murder. You're going to be guilty of an abomination of God. You're going to be guilty for every baby that's aborted from this election forward. And you certainly don't need to be Catholic to be inspired by the humility and heart of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, or to embrace his message. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Amen. 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 We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias, to defend religious liberty. America is in many ways divided like it's never been before. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example that we can follow. We're living in a time and age that we never thought possible before. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? Maybe we now we're all Catholics again. <laughs> You're gonna be held seriously to account by God. Be guilty of murder. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Of an abomination of God. Amen. How can there be a Protestant church? You're going to be guilty of murder. Of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. protest is over.
if there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? I'm a right-wing conservative Christian type, that's how I've always been brought up and I've always voted towards the right-wing, um, the party that would be more likely to support Christianity in the right wing. Sadly, there isn't really any of that left in politics, whether it be the UK or the US, there's no real Christianity. That's like saying that Fox is a Christian news network while it airs Lucifer on the other hand. So, just because this is the pre-work run to the elections, it doesn't mean to say that we're still not in the season of the end times, that the US and, well, most of the world is turning their back on God. It doesn't change any of that. Don't get caught in the hype. This ties into the making the male look crazy and the uh, female candidate more composed. So again, with that demonizing of the male, the age of the woman, all of that. It also ties into the demonising of the Christian, that, that a lot of Christians, because he's standing as right wing, are getting drawn into that, but then at the same time uh, being branded as racist, being branded as homophobic, being branded as extremist. And we've got the whole oncoming, what seems to be, provocation of chaos. Knock the crap out of him, would you? Seriously. Just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. This man is not free from the agenda. From what I've seen, there's no way he really can't be when billionaire rubbing shoulders with the elite and getting to this position in order to be shown across the world and run for president. Uh, uh, you don't you don't get to that position without being involved and in some way, shape or form. I'm sorry to say, it's just the truth. So once again, saying things that are intentionally not politically correct to stir up the the bucket well whilst we've got all these massive influx of immigration that they've allowed all of the you know allowing all that to happen at the same time stirring up a sense of patriotism but with a false candidate who um who draws the right wing into that and stirs them up just like they're doing with alex jones agents of chaos that's what we'd call them and people say, well, why would the press be going against them? Hegelian dialectic, scapegoatism. The reason the, the press would be going against them is because with every hateful statement that this person will make, with every amount of, every time the press laughs at Donald Trump, to put it simply, that is actually a converted form of them laughing at the right-wing Christians. That, do you see the way it works? They're tarring Christians with that racist branding, claiming that they are linked to Christianity, and but then at the same time, you know, denying the fundamental principles of Christianity. For example, Donald Trump was asked if he would ever seek forgiveness, and he pretty much, in so many words, said no. But it is making the left wing probably look a bit more composed, Hillary Clinton and making the right wing look maniacal, crazy. Even, you know, just the whole comedy act is all a comedy act, which I believe that this is controlled opposition um, in order to make the right wing look mentally insane. That is what they are doing over and over again. With every, every time we keep seeing this over and over that the right wing is being portrayed because it links to Christian fundamentalism and evangelical Christianity, they're making the right wing look weak, they're making the right wing look uh, unstable um, and laughable.
so your mind must be filled with the word of God when all people persecute you and turn on you. This is no game. The church in America is going to suffer so terribly. We will be called things that we're not and persecuted, not for being followers of Christ, but for being radical fundamentalists who do not know the true way of Christ, which of course is love and tolerance. You'll go down as the greatest bigots and haters of mankind in history. Your suffering will not be noble. Agents of chaos, that's what we'd call them. In the third rank, we shall set up our own, to all appearance, opposition. Our real opponents at heart, aka the Christians, will accept this simulated opposition as their own and will show us their cards. Now, how, how blatant are we seeing that, that Christians are being goaded and baited into this seeming opposition? Skipping down. Now, this is what I was saying about the uh, emotions that are being used and the hypersensitivity. Look at this. When a pulse quickens, these hands will lead opinion in the direction of our aims. When a pulse quickens. Emotional impulse quickening. For an excited patient loses all power of judgment and easily yields to suggestion. Ah... The, those fools who will think they are repeating the opinion of a newspaper of their own camp will be repeating our opinion or any opinion that seems desirable for us. In the vain belief that they are following the organ of their party, they will in fact follow the flag which we hang out for them. Be careful guys, don't fall for the traps. Peace, God bless.